Captain Chase. We're in the Florida Keys. I'm here with Papa Gator. Doing a recap on the big sword I caught the other day. Caught it on this big reel right here. Stud reel, stud rod. So I just wanted to talk to you guys about how I caught this big sword and where we caught them and what how deep and everything and um on this rod we have about 60 yards of this like 120 pound test line and that's uh, after you get to your braid and when you get your swordfish on it's meant to just give it a bunch of stretch that way you don't pull your hooks because the swordfish mouth is really really soft and so we went out to where it drops off out here in the Keys. It's the first time I've ever been that deep in the boat. And we get out to where it drops off from about 1,500 feet to about 1,700 feet. And you wanna fish right on that drop off. And what we did is we had about seven pounds of weight and you send your bait down and you have about 30 yards of the, from the weight to your hook and you send it down and it takes it about four minutes to hit the bottom. And once you hit the bottom, you crank it up about a hundred feet. And what you're looking for is a tiny hit and not the rod tip. It's gonna be the smaller than a pinfish would hit your rod. And you're really looking for is when the boat's rocking, you know, usually with your weight, it'll have like this consistency of this like an up and down movement. And a swordfish bite sometimes won't even be just like a, a pull down. Sometimes it'll be like the rod will just give slack a little bit or it might look like it just gains a little bit of weight and pulls down a little bit further than it did when you rocked. But um, these swordfish, they live down in a, from 1,500 feet to 2,000 feet of water. And it's so deep that the water down there is just like pitch black and they can't see anything. And we have these like little lights that go up above your leader and they're meant to like flash and like imitate a squid underwater and we use this giant like a fake squid skirt and a giant piece of mahi or bonita wrapped around one big giant j-hook and once you get them down there you get a bite you gotta kind of just let them feed it let you feed line to them let them eat it for a little bit and then you really just crank them up and a lot of times 90% of the swordfish you get on, they'll just come straight up to the surface once you have them hooked. And when you get him coming up, he'll come right up easy and only just barely even pull any line out until he gets about 300 foot of water from the surface. And that's when he can start seeing light again and it kind of, he kind of gets like miscombobulated and starts freaking out starts thrashing around and he'll start pulling drag. And then that's usually when um, the fighter will usually switch it from electric to hand cranking. And you can use the electric on this side over here and the hand crank on this side. And once you get him up to the surface, usually that's when he just goes absolutely nuts. And when t when it's a big sword, he'll make another run back down. And that's where you gotta be worried about pulling the hook. But if it's a smaller swordfish, like 100 to 150 pounds, he'll usually come right up to the surface where you can get a gaff or a harpoon him in. So, and what happened with mine is we, uh, we got him on, got him coming up got it to where you have to unclip the weight and right when we unclipped the weight we got a bunch of slack in the line and he went under the boat and once he got under the boat he went straight back for the engines and he wrapped up twice around the engines where we couldn't get it untangled and so george was our captain helping us out and teaching us how to catch these swordfish he was back there yelling at us telling us what to do and we, he grabbed the line we ended up hand lining him in and my dad and I both manned each one gaff and we stuck them both twice right in the gill plate with a big gaff. And it was awesome. Here's, here's the gaff that we used right here. It's one of them. 
the giant gaff. And this one especially has this breakaway tip right here. See that big barb right there? It's meant that when you gaff them, he breaks off this little thing and you fight him by a rope. Because sometimes they get so big, they get out of control or you can't hold the gaff in your hands without getting ripped off the boat. But I was the it was awesome experience. I've been wanting to catch a swordfish for a really long time. It's been on my bucket list on a fish to catch. And this is so luckily we got one bite and we made it happen. Caught him on that one bite. And it was just an awesome experience. Right there. Okay. Okay. Give me a few more minutes, Charlie, quick. I got it. What do I do? What do I do? In front of me. Where do you want me to go? Turn left? I'm out of gear. I'm out of gear. I'm out of gear. You want me to get him, Kate? He's coming up in the boat here. Yeah, take it down. Take it down. Take it down. How are you going to bring it to? Other side. Okay. Get over here. Get over there. Come on. Okay, come on. Come on, buddy. Stick him, stick him. He's right there. Get him, Chase. Hold him. Hold him. Right there. Don't move. Don't move. Go, George! <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Beautiful, look how pretty it is. A nice little one, man. <laughs> man Come on, let's go, okay? Great shot. <laughs> look at that. That's right. Hold this bill, don't let go. So guys, after I caught my first swordfish, you know, I, got, I went from being a person who's never caught a swordfish in my life to, you know, I finally got one under my belt and I'm still learning how to do everything. And, you know, I paid attention really close to what Captain George Campbell was telling me what to do. And so I had a good, you know, understanding about what I, what I need to do in order to be successful in swordfish. Sorry about that, I, guys over there cutting rebar the big saw um so if you can't hear me that's what that is over there but um so I, we were i was with george campbell one of our uh, one one captain that's been helping us out teaching us how to fish in the florida keys and be successful offshore and george is actually good friends with nick stanzig um if you know him He's one of the guys who has one of the records for the biggest swordfish in Florida. Um, he's also one of the guys who first figured out how to catch swordfish in the daytime because usually they just catch them at night because the swordfish will come from all the way on the bottom when it's um, in the daytime. They'll come up to the top when it's nighttime because it's all dark and they'll eat squid on the surface. And the only way that people were able to catch them before is if they went out at night and they free line a bunch of lines and did a bunch of different things, staging lines at different depths in order to catch them. And Nick and his father and a few other guys ended up figuring out how to catch swordfish in the daytime. So definitely I was like, yes, I definitely want to go with this guy. And George, if you can make this happen, man, you'll be the man and you'll make my trip down here in the Keys. And so 
George ended up texting Nick for me, and Nick ended up texting me, asking me if I wanted to go with him on Sunday. And I was like, heck yeah, man, anything you need me to do, I'll be willing to do it. And so, Nick told me to be there at 6.05. I get there at 6.05, not knowing what to expect. I didn't know if I needed to, you know, help him do a bunch of stuff or if he had a mate that was going to do a bunch of things for him or if I was just going to ride along just to watch. And I ended up getting there and... Um, I introduced myself to Nick, and right away, Nick just starts giving me orders on what to do. And I'm like, man, I'm doing most of the jobs of like what a first mate would be doing for me back home. And I started wondering to myself, like, the heck, I, is his mate late? Or like, am I the first mate today? And it turns out, um, I technically was the first mate that day, because Nick um, was just initially gonna fish it by himself, I guess. But he asked me if I wanted to come and help him, and I was like, heck yeah. So after Nick started giving me a bunch of orders on what he wanted me to do, I started doing them, and the charter, we started talking about what the charter was today, and Nick was saying how it was gonna be a filming day, and that the guy he was bringing uh, was a guy who has like a YouTube and a Instagram page, and he's pretty big for posting a bunch of sharks and stuff and you didn't know if we wanted to catch a shark or first or if we want to catch swordfish so initially me thinking that like i don't know you know who this is and i thought the guy we were taking was just some random youtuber that has you know a decent amount of followers and i just wanted to go with nick to get a swordfish and maybe some kind of shark under his belt so the guy comes ben ben freeman um he comes and introduces me to himself and and I shake his hand. When we go out, we have a guy filming Chad Smith. He's a really good um, photographer. And I'm, I know him from back home. He's been with a few guys, but um, we get out there, we get fishing. I'm talking to Ben like he's just some random guy, normal, normal charter. And later on in the trip, I figured, if we find out that he's with Barstool Sports and he's the guy who runs the outdoors page for them. Crazy, because like the one time I could ever go with someone like Nick Stanzik, someone I really admire in the sword fishing area. And I get to go with not only Nick Stanzik, but also Ben Freeman, who's with uh, Barstool Sports. It was just an unbelievable experience. <laughs> But to talk about what happened on that trip we went on a couple of days ago when I went with Nick. Um, we, we ended up having a few bites in the morning and we didn't get to set a hook in either one of those. They just kind of bit it and left. And we had one tear up the bait and one hit the lights on the line. And so later on in the day, like about around 12 to one o'clock, we finally get one on. We got him coming up to the surface and about halfway up, it just, the rod just pulled slack and we pulled the hook on him. And we thought we had one coming up and then after that, we just like, oh man, we'll be lucky to even get another one on again. And not even the next drift after that, we get hooked up again. We start fighting this fish and immediately it starts fighting back instead of just coming up like a swordfish usually does. And Nick was just saying how 90%, we were 90% likely that it's probably a, a night shark instead of a swordfish because swordfish usually come up and he caught one a couple days ago, a night shark in the same area. And it was fighting the same way how is it fighting on our rod. And so we weren't you know, disappointed it was a night shark because it's still an awesome species and they're super rare it's really rare to even catch them in the daytime usually they catch them at night because they come up like a swordfish at night but we got the night shark up got some really cool pictures and videos of them and i'll share some here but um so we get the rods and everything rigged back up and we're dropping two poles down with nick at a time we have one that's going straight down to the bottom and we're sitting there messing with it, dropping it down, reeling it back up and just keeping it right on the bottom. And then we had one rod 
that was more towards like the back of the boat and we dropped that one first and it had we clip a float line attached attached to it and what the float would do is when we'd send it out there like 1400 feet when we'd be in 1500 feet of water and the float would keep tension and it would sit straight up and down like this in the water and when we know we'd have a bite on that rod is when the buoy just kind of float up and lean, lean on its side and that would tell us that's like a sword has grabbed the bait and is coming up to the surface and taking that tension off that weight and making that buoy float up and unfortunately we never got a bite on the float but it was still you know you always got a chance if you have your bait in the water so it was nice having another rod out in order to increase our chances of getting a bite but so later on we finally get another fish on and it's at like three o'clock in the afternoon and we think this is the one we get them all the way up to the surface and nick's starting to film now and we're starting to yell and scream because it's starting to be a big swordfish and we get them up near the boat where we can see them and we think it was about 150 to 200 pound swordfish we get them up to where i could barely get a glimpse on them on a video in the water and he just takes off and goes straight back down to the bottom. And we find him up and down for about three different runs. And finally, he just pulls off. And we we're all devastated because it's getting late in the day. And most likely, we weren't going to get another one on because it's, it's rare in general to even get one hooked on a hook. And so Nick doesn't give up. We continue to drop down and make two different drops. I think we got one or two more bites after that. And it was getting around five o'clock in the afternoon. We're still out in the water, 40 miles out. And finally, Nick sees a bite. When I was, I was looking at the back rod, he, was, he sees a bite, runs over the pole, sets the hook, and we got a swordfish on finally. And this is like a buzzer beater at the end of the day. And we get the swordfish all the way up. And it's a smaller one we, once we got to see him. And we got him up and we thought he was hooked in the dorsal fin and when we got him up closer we re realized he was just a lassoed around and had the hook hooked on a line and he was just snug down tight on around his body and it's just cool to see that like when a swordfish goes and attacks the bait he's just going crazy where the line can even just like foul hook him or wrap him all up where he's just getting tangled up and that's in that in that case that's what's happened but um I was glad for Ben because he went through just a roller coaster of emotions. It's going from losing two fish and catching a shark instead of a swordfish and finally getting one. And then we ended up being lassoed. But we're glad we got one on for him. And glad he was able to post that on Barstool Sports. And well, that's it. So the whole reason I want to start making some YouTube videos and to really just start getting into filming and editing is I want to you know kind of introduce you guys to how my life is and being a chartered captain and fishing all over the world fishing tournaments fishing inshore and but also I want to use my uh, my position I am in in life to really spread the gospel so I'm gonna have multiple videos where we'll just be this fishing and you know we'll have something crazy going on but then there'll be videos where we'll just sit down and have guest speakers that'll be with me and then we'll talk about Jesus and talk about God and even be on the boat sometimes and just fishing and talking about God and I'm really excited I can't wait to see what goes on and I hope you guys will just stay in tune and just continue to support me and we'll see what happens and I'm excited see you guys Oh yeah, nice.